Hi! Hello! Today, I want to talk about a topic that I and many others very much like in mangas and webcomics, which is the villainous isekai reincarnation otome game novel fantasy genre. As someone who really enjoys these series, there are many, and I mean many, to choose from. The genre is kind of made up of three existing well known themes isekai, otome games, and historical fantasy. Most people might know the genre as isekai protagonist in the body of an otome game villainess, but the fan community kind of accepts every variant across the board as part of the genre, which is dubbed otome isekai, even when it doesn't have otome game tropes and isn't even an isekai story. I know it, you know it, everyone knows it. It's where someone gets transported or transmigrated to another world, parallel universe, virtual, whatever. In some cases, not only is the character transported, they also get reincarnated in the other world, maybe even take over the body of someone pre existing. Most Otomi Isekai series fall into transmigration, where the protagonist enters the body of a pre existing character, or enters regression before they died, so then you watch their attempts to avoid a bad ending. Maybe even a good ending, gotta let the hero lose sometimes. Otome games are what really define the villainess genre. For those unfamiliar, otome games are story-based video games marketed for women. They tend to also be visual novels where you read a bunch of text and pick multiple choice answers to progress the story. It's part dating and part simulation since most, if not all, are about winning hearts like collecting trophies. It's a reverse harem where you play as a female main character, aka the heroine, and interact with a bunch of potential male love interests. Each one of these love interests are roots in the game for you to level up or increase their affection bar to get their good ending. In some games, there are even bad endings. Harem routes, friendship endings, you get the point. It's shoujo, it's romance, it's high school, fantasy, prince, bird, ninja, siblings, vampire, office. You name it, your faithful one exists out there somewhere. I've recently learned that games such as Utapri and Arcana are not otome games as they do not focus or have any romantic plot in the story. These would be classified as Jose Muke or Joshi Muke, along with games like Ensemble Stars and the Twisted Wonderland series. Although the initial villainess genre spawns from the popularity of the otome games, the getting isekai and reincarnated as the villainess rival of the heroine, Many series don't actually evolve around the games, as can be seen in Korean and Chinese webcomics. Otome games are more prevalent in its birthplace of Japan, so instead characters are isekai into classic romance novels. The setting is the same, except it's not a choose-your-own-adventure, and the endgame love interest is already laid out by the author. And many initially focus on the villainess surviving or finding a purpose in life, even if romance still ends up being the main plot. Many of these series are set in historical fantasy, as it gives an otherworldly feel, with some magic sprinkled in. Like many isekais, the setting is some random make-believe era during European medieval times, with castles, knights, kingdoms, dragons, and the like. Villainess stories often revolve around the royalty and aristocratic social class, the many highlights of these series. The typical opening scene begins when the isekai main character wakes up in the body of the villainess or suddenly remembers her past life. The ending starts when her engagement with the crown prince is annulled before a crowd due to her accused bullying of the heroine. This is a so-called condemnation event, where the story either begins or is the fated ending the main character will try to avoid in the future, because for some reason the common trope has all the love interests on the heroine side. Avoiding the ending is a case-by-case -case basis, which is either to not die, not get exiled, or, I don't know, something like not become a sacrificial lamb to appease the gods and dragons. Keep in mind this is the basic setting that most authors have used, as this event is surprisingly not common in actual Otome games. And honestly, the whole historical fantasy trope going from commoner to saint as princess doesn't really exist in any Otome games, at least from my findings. Most people who encountered the villainess isekai genre has probably heard of My Next Life as a Villainess, All Routes Lead to Doom, or Hamefura for short. I believe it's the most popular of the bunch. 
This is probably the best example of the whole genre covering all the tropes. Isekai, check. Otome game, check. Villainess, check. Harem, medieval Europe, nobility, death flags. The list goes on. Oh, and before I forget, death flags. Or flags in general, but doom, destruction, because villainess. This is a thing you find often in Otome games, which is the well-known red flags of danger, but instead it's scenes or events where the character could inch closer to a bad ending. One of the most popular villainess isekais, Villains Are Destined to Die, also known as Death is the Only Ending for the Villainess, also covers all the tropes, but on top of being isekai the otome game mechanics still work. Unlike Hamefuda, this series takes a darker route where the death rate is much higher and the main character's actions are often not in her control, so she has to pick response answers to raise the affections when everyone seriously hates her guts. If you search for Otome Isekai, there are many more series out there that follow similar, if not the exact same tropes, only with a few narrative differences here and there. Like falling for the male lead, the second male lead, the villain, a side character, or even a random character doesn't exist in the game. They could also become the male lead's child or raise the male lead and then try to send him off to the heroine as a way to avoid getting killed. Like I said at the beginning, there are many to choose from, even those that don't have harems or even a second male lead for that matter. Of course, let's not forget those that take the genre in a different route where the Iskai lead is a side character or the villainess decides to embark on a solo slice of life. This is where the bigger otome isekai genre begins and that's a topic for another day. I'm mainly focusing on the villainess. There are a lot of series out there that are widely unique. I have personally haven't read them, but they do have very interesting stories from what I've seen. But I want to highlight some that I personally like, and they still follow a classic romance villainess isekai story. So these are a few of my picks. An observation log of my fiancé who calls herself a villainess. Everything about this series is pretty much the same as Hamefura, but it's told from the perspective of the male lead, Prince Cecile. Our villainess Bertia might as well be as dense as Bakarina, but rather than trying to not go down the path of doom, she works to be the best villainess, making sure the plot progresses as intended. When really she's far too innocent and nice that she reveals every bad event to Prince Cecile, even the fact that she's reincarnated in a Tome game. She's one of those villains where all her schemes actually end up helping instead of ruining, retroactively preventing any doom from happening. Prodigy Prince Cecile, on the other hand, as Bertia's father puts it, a cold-hearted person, even as a kid. But meeting Bertia made life a little more fun and unpredictable, solving all her issues and going along with her day-to-day -day villainous events. The series is completed, but a sequel has recently been released following the events of the ending. It's a very sweet and comical story where everyone, one way or another, gains a positive experience thanks to Bertia. Kill the Villainess This one is much closer to Villains Are Destined to Die, having a much darker and serious tone. But rather than trying to not die, our villainess Eris is actively trying to get killed. While most Otome Isekai characters accept their fate in another world, Eris does not want that and wishes to return home. She tries various methods of self-harm, but they've all resulted in failure, like the story is preventing her from changing the plot. Later she meets a witch revealing that to return home, she must do what the plot demands of her role as a villainess. Assassinate the heroine. The story follows her meeting various characters from the original story as she sets up the stage like it was meant to be. This series humanizes the characters as we get to learn everyone's backstory and their personal struggles, even a little from the original heiress. Ultimately, it's up to Eris if she truly wishes to return or to stay, even if there wasn't anything from her original world that was worth seeing again. Endo and Kobayashi Live, the latest on Sundere villainess Lizolette. Okay, the title is kind of long, so I'm just going to shorten it to Endo and Kobayashi because the literal translation from the Japanese title is this. Unlike most otome isekai stories, this one occurs without any transportation to another world. Instead, the actual otome game comes to life as our narrators Endo and Kobayashi, or 
gods, as the game characters like to call them, give advice and converse with the characters to achieve the ultimate happy ending, where no one dies and everyone lives happily ever after. Similar to Observation Log, the series is mainly set from the perspective of the male lead, um... Prince Siegwald Fitzenhagen. As he is the only one able to hear our narrators. Later, we are able to see the series from other characters thanks to the power of foretold magic, blah blah blah, and... Uh... We are occasionally brought back to the real world as Endo and Kobayashi discuss their game plan. It's another lighthearted story for the most part, but there are various layers to each character as the plot progresses, and even some surprises. The battle at the end of the story is still bound to happen, so everyone is preparing themselves for the worst to come. Oh, also, an anime has been announced for Endo Kobayashi, so you might want to binge this before it airs. Tales of Reincarnation and Maydare, the worlds were Switch. This one's a little different from the rest. First off, it doesn't revolve around any aristocrats and has no battle of love amongst a harem. The story is more a wizardry school and magic type beat involving reincarnations, regret, and some long-standing unresolved businesses. While the regret focuses more on unrequited love, it also drives the plot for our main character, Kazuha Oda, who has reincarnated as Makia Odril, a descendant of the world's worst witch. Spoiler warning to anyone who's just about to read this, you can skip to this. So, she gets stabbed and thrown off a school building as the opening. Okay, so it actually introduces us to Kazuha and her friends Airi Tanaka and Toru Saito. Kazuha has a crush on Toru, but never got the courage to confess. Airi decides to one-up Kazuha by confessing to Toru, only for both of them to end up being killed by a mysterious blonde character. As Kazuha encounters this, she too is killed with the blonde guy telling her, Mayder, no matter how many times you are reborn, I will kill you without fail. The story is quite simple, it's legend speak of a savior who will come to save the world of Mayder, with four guardians standing to protect them. Thor, a slave boy who was uh, taken in by Makia, I guess, he also grew up with her, uh, he was chosen as one of the guardians. Something important to mention is that Thor looks strikingly similar to Toru, the high school friend and crush of Kazuha, who is now Makia. Their separation kicks off the main plot of the series as Makia enters the Lun Rishia Magic, Magic School in the royal capital, where she could once again reunite with Thor. While there is a lot of world building and lore in the tale of evil magicians and the hero, the pace may be slow for some as it focuses more on being a slice of life around Makia and her schoolmates. As we get introduced to more characters, various mysteries are set up throughout the series. This is a story you have to sit for for the long one, but well worth the stay for its uniqueness as an isekai. That's all I have to share. I don't want to repeat myself, but there are indeed various series out there within Otome Isekai that don't just repeat themselves. If you want to find out more, I would say go check out the subreddit r slash otome isekai. They have memes, recommendations, discussions on various stories out there. Tags like Otome Games and Villainess could also be helpful if you're looking up for more series. So here's to more and more Otome Isekai to come in the future.